Well, this quarter is a little bit better than what we've seen in, in Q2, and it's coming mainly from Asia. Asia has, has recovered uh, either completely when you talk about China, and if you talk about the rest of Asia, mainly Japan, uh, Korea, or even India, they're on the way uh, back to normal, which was the situation before the, the COVID-19. So uh, a, a, a lot better in, in Asia. Uh, USA coming back slowly. We are at minus 40% in the US, but uh, Europe still behind with the minus 60, 52% compared to last year. And that, that's, that's maybe what's going on today. In terms of what's happening in Europe, when do you expect to see a recovery? Clearly, the region is lagging compared to Asia and other parts of the world. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you're absolutely right. We, we don't know for sure. You know, we, we, we expected uh, a recovery starting in September and continuing, of course, in Q4. It's not the case. You know, end of August, beginning of September was good. But uh, since the middle of September, we have seen the drop, a reduction. And uh, as of today, we don't know for sure. We, we, we hope that with a vaccine sometime in 2021, we should be back to uh, a, a, nice, a nice curve in terms of return to normal. Is there any possible way that we could see a path to a resumption of travel without a vaccine? Today, we heard from IAG, the British Airways owner, that they're calling for using testing as a means to get people back in the air. Do you see a path, a feasible path using this? Yeah, I think it's, it's going to be a big plus this day that all the governments allow this kind of system to be used in airports. Of course, it's not a vaccine, but it's going to be a lot better. And if you can test a person in 15 or 20 minutes, it will help and ease the recovery of, uh, of our industry, for sure, guaranteed. Now, you talk about the uncertainty uh, when we look at activity in Q4, yet today you reconfirmed your guidance that you put out at the uh, half-year stage. Do you have visibility into year-end? Well, we, we are only two months before year-end, so yes, we, we have some visibility. Of course, what happened yesterday in France is not helping to... to, to uh, make uh, this guidance uh, firm and, and, and sure. Uh, of course, we have some, some challenges even before the end of this year in the next two months. But all in all, you know, you have pluses and minuses. All in all, we think that the guidance we gave to the market in July is still valid and we will do everything we can in order to, 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 to make it happen or even do better if we can. And putting it all together, how would you describe the shape of the recovery that you're expecting to see? Well, it's difficult to say, you know, everybody was thinking about the V-shape. Uh, today, some people talk about the double, W uh, shape. In fact, no, nobody knows for sure. Uh, what we see is, 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 a, is something a little bit better. As I said at the beginning, Q3 is better than Q2. We think that Q4 is going to be even better than Q3. And the recovery is going to happen in 2021. But uh, again, you know, uh, the... the, the the thing is coming from uh, the airlines, the end customers. We need the airlines to survive. We need the airlines to be healthy. We need, we need people to fly. As soon as people start to fly again, things are going to go better and better very, very quickly. Look at China. I mean, in China, people fly again. You know, it's, it's not a question of would I want to fly? Would I feel secure to fly? People like to fly and want to fly. It's just a question of availability and airports, which will ease the way people fly. Mm, I certainly take those points, uh, absolutely. Uh, when it comes to airline behavior, you talk about how so much of your trajectory depends on airlines. What are you seeing in terms of airline behavior amid this second wave in terms of cash, pr cash preservation and expenditure? Yes, you, you're right. The, the, the airlines are really looking at short term. They just want to survive. They, they, they don't want to collapse. That's the only thing we see with airlines. Everything they can push on the right, they do. Uh, all kind of new orders they, they place with us. They want us to reschedule, postpone uh, uh, the delivery because they don't have the cash. They, you know, they look at their cash and, and they are really looking at the next couple of months in front of them. They are not looking really six months or even one or two years in, in, in ahead of, of, of today. You know, they really want uh, to, to, to be alive in the next coming, coming months. That, that's the main and single objective of the airlines today in Europe.
Mm. And looking at your uh, cost-cutting um, initiative, you say you're on course to reach or exceed your cost-cutting targets. What more can we expect in terms of taking costs out of the business at this point? Uh, ju ju just intensify what we have been doing since the month of April. We, are, we, are, we have cut our costs everywhere we could. As you said a bit earlier, you know, we, have, uh, we were more than 100,000 people in the group before the crisis. Today we are 80,000, so we decreased uh, our headcount by around 20,000 people. And in addition to that, we signed a lot of agreements, especially in France, in order to reduce the cost of our workforce uh, for the next coming years. So, yes, we have to intensify what we have been doing so far in the last uh, eight months. And, and, and do more. And if you have to close uh, additional plants, we'll do. And if you have to reduce uh, further the, the quantity of, uh, of headcount, we'll do.